Well, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I just want to welcome you to our service today. And uh, I pray and will pray that, uh, that you would be able to engage in this service and be a part of it almost as if you were in the sanctuary uh, all together. Uh, before we start <coughs> singing, I wanted to uh, share a little word from today's Daily Bread. Uh, and this is Saturday, so it's Saturday's Daily Bread. But uh, they, they reference Psalm 46, so I'm going to read that from, from here and then share the insight paragraph that's below it. And this is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their singing, surging rather, uh, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, <clears throat> the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She has not fallen. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And listen to this uh, insight about that psalm from Tim Gustafson and he writes this given the dire language of its introduction this psalm was likely written during a significant crisis but which crisis many scholars believe it occurred during the reign of Hezekiah when the when the Assyrian army had surrounded Jerusalem the situation looked dismal for God's people but the city had two advantages that the Assyrians knew nothing of. Hezekiah had protected the spring of Gion, located outside the city, by tunneling through the stone to the water source, and then he concealed the spring. This life-giving spring may be the inspiration for the line, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Most important, however, the psalmist knew the ultimate source of the city's safety. Jerusalem enjoyed the presence of the broad one true God, his miraculous intervention on behalf of the city meant that they had only to be still and await his deliverance. He's the life-sustaining spring. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for this service, for this time that we can be together even though we're not together. And as everybody watches this <clears throat> in their own convenience, that you would still be present with them that you would still speak to their hearts, that you would use your word to minister life and health and healing and peace. Bless this time, we offer it to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
strength and ever-present help in our time of trouble, and we trust in you. Are you hurting and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a friend from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The
good morning. It's great to be with you again. Uh, this week, we are starting our new series, Made to Wait. And uh, today's title is God, the God of the Pause Button. And we're going to be looking at uh, Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version, but I, I want to encourage you this morning, because not the, the, the text is not going to be up on the screen. So I want you to take the time to follow in the Word. Now, if you don't have an English Standard Version, that's okay. NIV, uh, if, if you don't have a Bible at home uh, for some reason, break out your, your smartphone, uh, look up Bible Gateway, and you can actually pull up Acts 1, 1 to 11, on the English Standard Version, and follow along. But if you don't want to do that, pull out the Bible that you have, follow, and I want to encourage you not to be looking at every word in the sense, but kind of get a panoramic uh, view of the Scriptures today. Kind of look at the, the, the story and, and read between the lines and see what's happening, because uh, this is an incredible time in the life of the church, um, much probably like we are experiencing now. A real roller coaster for the disciples as they were following Jesus. Three years going with him, watching him do incredible things, and then coming to a dead standstill, a shocking halt, to watch him uh, crucified before their very eyes. Uh, and, and now we are going to, we're, we're on the other side of that. Uh, he has risen, and they have learned a way, but they are going to learn an entirely new way. But in order for that to happen, um, the Lord has to kind of hit the pause button for a time. So, why don't you come with me now to the scriptures, and we're going to look at Acts chapter 1, verses 1 to 11, and it says this, in my former book, Theophilus, I wrote all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions to the Holy Spirit, to the apostles he had chosen, and after his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And after he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes. And a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Amazing, amazing stuff that, uh, that we are reading about today. Imagine talking with someone and then watching them actually rise and go into the clouds. And that's exactly what Jesus did. Everything that has happened up to this moment has brought them to a place where I believe through the roller coaster of their emotions and times that they have experienced, uh, they are primed to go forward. I mean, what more could catapult you than, than Christ revealing himself, taking 40 days to reveal himself and instruct further, and then to put the icing and the cherry on the cake, he has risen before them. Um, it, it's like, like coming out of the locker room after being charged up on a lot of caffeine and ready for the game. I mean, uh, what next? What next? Because in this time, God is going to show them a new way. But amazingly enough, and I think this might be hard for us to, to take hold of, 
in our Western society, but also in the environment that we're living in now, that we want to get on with life. Like, what's next? Uh, I, uh, it's like a breakout moment. And they might have even felt that they were on the brink of something wonderful, which they were. But God hits the pause button. He gives them a weight. Literally kind of holds up his hand. And we see that in verse 4. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. And it would kind of make one to scratch their heads. Imagine, and, and you, know, you don't have to imagine, you're being told right now, we're all being told right now, as much as we're itching to get on with life and to have this, uh, get back to some kind of normal, whatever that's going to look like and be, uh, we're told you have to wait a little longer. You have to wait a little longer. You need to, to take your time in this. You have to wait. And so here, like the disciples, and I'm sure there's got to be something going inside in us also, we start to wonder how much longer? When is this going to end? When can we be free of this, this, uh, this time of being placed on hold? And you can imagine that the disciples may have been feeling that. But Jesus did give them instructions. He gave them, the Bible tells us, a command to wait. Many of us are feeling like we're being commanded by the authorities above us, by the governor, by the president, to wait, to hold on. But I want to tell you that the Bible clearly instructs us that we are to honor those in our, who are above us in authority and to, to, to honor them and to take their instructions because God has put them in place. Now, that doesn't mean we have to agree with everything they say. We don't have to agree with their policies necessarily all the time, or whether they're on the right or the left of the aisle. It doesn't mean that we have to agree with any of that. But while, we are in, while they are in place, we need to honor and respect them and kind of follow their lead because God has placed them over us to guide us in this time. And I encourage you to just hold on and see what God is going to do in this time. Because God is hitting the pause button for us. He is giving us instructions to wait. And I want to tell you he's doing that because he is trying to show us a new way. One that we have not yet experienced. He is trying to show us this. And he was doing that with the disciples. You see? He, he was telling them good things are going to come. And we're going to cover that before we, we end this message today. Good things are coming. But I have some preparation, some work that needs to be done in you because there's something missing. There is someone missing. Someone that you can't do without, you can't go forward without. Now imagine, as much as you and I want to get on with it, God is wanting to instruct us and give us something for the days, for the months, and the years ahead. For us as a people, in our personal lives, as us as a church, what does he want to do? Well, as much as we think we might know, there is much that God needs to instruct us in. And I want to tell you that the scriptures tell us in Luke 24, 45, that Jesus, after he was risen, he opened their minds. That is, he opened the disciples' minds. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures. They had a greater understanding. But even in all that, there was still much more they needed to learn. And so Jesus spends these 40 days and he instructs them and now he's going to leave them to wait for a few more. And I, I want to stop for a second and ask you, how much do you understand of God? How much do you feel he's revealed to you? Because whatever you and I understand of God, it's simply because God has come into our lives and he's revealed himself to us. But there is so much more he wants to show us. And quite often, because we are going through the hustle and bustle of our days, and you know because you were there before Corona hit, all right? We're on, we're always going from one thing to another. I have had testimonies that spoke to someone on the phone yesterday, and I felt that my sister on the phone had grasped the heart of God in this time. She spoke to me about enjoying her family. Sharing meals together, which is something that was hard for her family. Spending time playing games, having conversations. 
I want to tell you. Stop and think, that right now is a gift from God to you and me. But we miss it so often in our daily lives, I do, because my mind is somewhere else. I'm on to the next thing. I'm on to the next message. I'm on to next week. Who am I to meet with? What do I have to do? And God is saying, wait, let's hit the pause button, because I want to speak to you. I want to share with you, and I want to tell you that Jesus hit the pause button, and they were made to wait in Jerusalem and pray because God was coming to them and he wanted to reveal to him the next step for their life. What do you think is the next step for your life? No matter what we're thinking right now, I'm sure it's much bigger than what we're thinking. No matter how much we think we know, there is so much that we don't know. We're like little children, you know, anxious. Like children who are going on vacation. I'm sure many of you have experienced this. I remember doing this as a kid. I remember my children doing this to me. When are we going to get there? We're going away. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Until they finally get there. And this is captured in Jesus' interactions with the disciples in Acts 1.6. It says this, And then, and then, they gathered around him. They gathered around Jesus and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Are you at this time going to make it happen? Because we want to see it happen. We want to be a part of this. And they were going to be a part of it, just like you and I are a part of God's plan. They're going to be a part of it, but they had to wait. They had to wait. You see, I believe that God is using COVID-19. Well, that he is using it for his purpose and his plans. That he is trying to show us a new way. But I think we can miss it if we don't allow him to press or the pause button or to more than anything accept it because it's already been pressed. Many of us are struggling with it in many different ways. But God has used this for his purposes, for his plan, because he's pressed the pause button, because he has great things in mind, just as he had for the disciples. What if I told you that there are many people who are yet to experience the love of God? And in this time, because God has hit the pause button, it is giving people pause to look at their lives, where they have been and where they are going to. And many people are thinking, is God real? Is God in this? Is he involved in my life? And more importantly, do I need him? Do I need him for my life? And I want to say that because the pause button is hitting many people's lives, it's giving them time to think and reflect instead of running around. Is my... My uncle used to say to me, many years ago, like chickens with no heads. See, God is on the brink of something wonderful here, but I think that we can miss it if we don't allow our hearts to rest in Him and to wait. And that's what Jesus was asking His disciples to do. Go and pray and wait, wait, because the Father is going to do something. Now, in order to wait, we need to rest. And in order to rest, I think verse 7 is very appropriate. It is not for you to know. In other words, rest. God has this covered. It's not for you to know the times and the dates. The Father has set by His authority. The Father has set by His authority. Many of us want to take life into our own hands right now. And we want to override, override much of what's being told to us and get on with it. Well, I want to tell you, there's a time coming after this that God is going to break out. And I believe that it is happening gradually that he is speaking to us. But let us not miss it. Verse 5, in a few days. Why not now? But Jesus says, in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Very easy to think, why not send it now? You're going, he should be coming. Like, you know, isn't that what we do kind of in America? You know, let's swap off. Let's get on to the next thing, you know? 
Why not? But Jesus says in a few days. Now I know what you and I are going through right now is more than just a few days. But again, pull back on a panoramic view. We're being asked to wait. The pause button has been hit. In a few days. Verse 8. You will receive power when? When? When is it going to happen? Right? Aren't a lot of us asking that question, when? When is this going to change? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you. I want to tell you that I think many a Christian does not tap in to God's presence and power the way God had designed because we're running to and fro. We busy ourselves with so many things. And I'm not saying that they're not good things. They might be church things. But we're, we're, we're kind of at times bouncing off the walls. And are we taking advantage of his presence in our lives on a daily basis? Because he is available for us each and every day. And yes, he has a purpose for us. But are we really latching on? Are we really getting what it is? Yes. And yes, verse 8. You will be my witnesses. I have a plan for you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. But for now, I want you to wait. Disciples had no, really no idea where, where this new life would take them. And I think many of us have no idea where this new life is going to take us. The new life in our environment, in our culture, but more importantly, the new life that God wants to give us through His presence and through the Holy Spirit. Why can't this be a time? Why can't C19 be a time where God gets His hands on us because He can? Why can't this be a time when we receive God in a fresh new way because we've been made to stop, made to wait, made to pull over to the side of the road and take a deep breath? Are you breathing? Quite often, as I'm going around my home, or I'm doing something, or maybe I'm even stretching, Kathy happens to notice, my wife happens to notice, that I'm not breathing. And she will make me laugh every time. Breathe! Because I don't even realize I'm not breathing. Do you realize that you're not breathing sometimes? What do, what do you? Do you realize it? You need to take deep breaths and relax receive what God has for us. I want to ask you this question this morning. Who's, who's in control? Who's in control of your life? Who's directing you, guiding you, instructing you? Who? What do you think is in control of your life? Do you think COVID-19 is in control of our life and in our nation? Do you think Governor Cuomo is in control of our state and, and everything that we, we do you know, and where we go? Or the President of the United States? Do you think he's in control of your life? I want to tell you, none of those are in control. Not this virus, not the governor, not the president, but the Lord himself. The Lord is in control, and he is looking to guide us through this time. But can we accept this time of waiting? Can we rest, find rest in it, and receive from the Lord? Because he says this to us in verse 4, Wait. Wait, I have a gift for you. Wait for the gift my Father has promised you. Wait for that promise which you have heard me speak about. Jesus has said many things and everything he has ever said has either come to place, come into place and taken place or will one day take place. Count on it. Everything he says, he is saying now, my Father has a promise for you but you need to wait. And I want to tell you, Whenever we are asked to wait, there is always something of God that is attached to it. 
because he has something he wants to give us. We need to slow down. He is in control. He knew COVID-19 was coming before anyone in the world had a clue. And in this, he has a purpose. And in this, he has a plan. And I want to tell you, he doesn't want us to miss it. He doesn't want us to miss the gift. There are many who are walking the face of this earth who have yet to receive the gift that God has for them. That gift, that missing piece to everyone's puzzle is his presence in our lives, the Holy Spirit. He has that for you and I. I don't care if you've been in the faith, like myself, for years. There is more to be had. In fact, I was reminded this week that Jesus was the only one who was given the Spirit without measure, limitless. Makes sense, right? As being part of the Godhead. Full access to the Father, full access to the Spirit. But you and I do not have full access. So we can always use more of the Holy Spirit. I want to tell you in this time, He has more of that gift that He wants to pour out into our lives. And if you're listening to this message today, and you have not yet asked Christ into your life, connected with Him, He wants to connect with you. Imagine that God would go out of His way to find you, to reach you, and to connect with you. Imagine that God would go out of his way and use this time in our world to get through to you, to touch your heart, to calm your fears, to give you a peace of mind, to give you a sense of himself. I want to tell you, he's doing that by hitting the pause button. Don't miss it. Don't miss it by, by getting taken up with hours of fear on the TV about what's next and when is this going to end. Shut it off. Go for a walk. Talk to God. I don't care who you are. Any one of us can talk to God like we talk to one another. God is wanting to do something. He's wanting to slow us down so that we can receive from Him. He's our comfort. He's our strength. He's our help. He's our God. And He wants to visit each of us. And it is my belief that as we go through this series, Made to Wait, that we're going to see that when God makes people wait, He has a purpose and a plan, and He wants them to catch a glimpse of Him. He wants them to see Him and to know Him. And right now, He is coming to you and I. In the midst of all this madness and upheaval and confusion and chaos, He is coming to us. And He is wanting to reveal Himself to us. To get closer. To go deeper. And for many of you, to start a relationship with. He wants to have a relationship with you. If he already has a relationship with you, he wants to get closer. He wants to go deeper. But for many of you who do not have that relationship, he wants it to begin. You see? Because he's the one. The Bible tells us literally in, in many ways that he is our passport. He is our ticket to ride or ticket to travel. You know, if you were to go overseas to a foreign country, you're not getting in until you open up that passport. Do you have a passport? It has your picture on it. It needs to be stamped. Well, God has a passport for each of us. It has our photo in it, but he needs to stamp it. And I want to tell you that this time, God wants to stamp that passport. He wants us to know him more than ever, and most of all, to experience his presence in this time. That's where we're going in the weeks to come, as we are made to wait. I want to take this moment with you to just pray. And I want to ask you, if you haven't already, to invite the Holy Spirit 
with me, invite the Holy Spirit into your life. Now, I've been a Christian a while, right? But there isn't a day I don't ask God to come into my life and to visit me. If you have never done it, why don't you pray with me today? And if you have, like myself, let's ask again. Oh Lord, come to me. Come. Let's take a moment and calm our hearts. Lord, help us to rest in you. Would you now come to us as we invite you in? Lord, you are the perfect gentleman. You are the perfect God, the only God. And Lord, we want to invite you in. Lord, come, calm our fears. Show us your path for our lives and lead us in the way to go. Lord, we thank you for hitting the close button in our lives. Now help us to see you in it all. In Jesus' name, amen. I wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to close the service uh, with a song that you don't know. Uh, it's an old song by the St. Louis Jesuits. It's called, Though the Mountains May Fall. And what was intriguing to me, especially for this time, is that it speaks of God's steadfastness and love toward us, no matter what. Our environment can change and be destroyed. Uh, situations can change. Circumstances can change. Even our attitude toward God and our faith can waver. But it doesn't change the fact that God is immutable, unchangeable, and His love and His steadfastness is toward us forever, no matter what.
We're glad you could join us. Pray that, and encourage you to continually tune in as we look for the God who makes us to wait. God bless you. Have a great week.